All right, guys, we're doing tournaments now uh, because it's the last important thing to discuss that I wanted everybody to gain access to. Things like events, challenges, guilds, and battlegrounds. We'll save those for a little bit later. Uh, but this is something that you're going to be have access to relatively early in the game, and I want to make sure I get those uh, out of the way first. So starting with tournaments. Uh, oh, look, I did something. I don't even know how I finished. Whatever. I don't care. <laughs> oh, look, rewards. Great. So tournaments are incredibly simple. Tournaments are three-day long events in which you register a team. Uh, based on whatever the requirements are. So, for example, this one requires I use Illyria, which uh, counts as a character. An, she is a elf healing character. So, one Illyria. I need one elf and one healer. I could put Senjiel in here to justify the other one, but I don't have a lot of investment in him. So, I'm going to go ahead and put another healer in. And another elf in, this being Nighty L, a good elf I happen to have. Then I have two open slots that I could fill with any characters I'd like. Uh, for me, I'm just going to go ahead and take my two... I was going to take my two strongest characters, and I'm still pretty sure I'm going to take my two strongest characters. Yeah, we'll just put... We'll just put these guys in. Now, I could obviously use some more damage dealers on this team, but I feel like being a little bit tanky is fine. My team power is pretty high, all things considered. Uh, I might rethink her as a healing option because there might be a better healer on my team. But ultimately, whatever you set here, that's the team people are going to face off against as you play. Now, I don't have to set her up here. She just happens to have a leadership ability that works very well with other elves uh, <laughs> as long as there's a living mage. But then I think about it more and more, and uh, I don't really care about my elves. So we're going to lead on Rantha, put her up here. And then get a little bit more value out of the characters we're using, hopefully. Uh, so this is the, the team I'm going to register. We're just going to go ahead and make that team registration happen. And now it is just about fights. Now you have five tickets at any time. You spend one, a timer starts, and you start accruing another one. Usually about 25 minutes, I believe. And I am so far down because I'm zero and zero. So first we're going to start off in a fight. You start seeing different characters of different investments. I remember that my team is about 33k power, so I'm going to look at the other teams. I'm going to look for people who have the lower power than I have. Uh, this person looks like a little bit lower than me, so that's fine. We'll attack them. Now, the team you register is not the team you have to use. That's very important. I want you guys to know that. You can register whatever team you think is going to hold up defensively to make sure people don't attack you. It doesn't hurt you it doesn't take away from what you're doing if they attack you and win but it does count as a loss you have so you have to make sure that you have a pretty tanky team on defense to avoid people from attacking you if possible now i don't necessarily feel like this 33k power team is the strongest but i'm not afraid of, of swapping out so let's do a battle and see what happens i'm just going to click auto as is tradition because i want to click auto um, a lot of times when I click auto on these, I do like to choose targets, but as you get familiarized with the characters in the game and know what they do, you can figure out who the priority is, and for me, I don't want Zara alive. Oh, already lost somebody. <laughs> oh, was, was it her? Yeah, it was the, the healer I don't have investment in that I'm required to use. Okay, now a lot of times as a player in this game... What you're going to look at is this is an opportunity. Well, I should invest in my Illyria then, right? Or I should invest in elf healers. Yeah, I got destroyed by this team. The team is just way better than me. Um, so I'm not doing well this fight at all. <laughs> and sometimes that's going to happen. Now, what I could do is I can invest more in those characters, right? Uh, the characters that are required for this fight, which I'm just going to click the button to see. Uh, sure. Yeah, I can invest more in Illyria, I can invest more in Elves, I can invest more in Healers. Or, I can accept the fact that, like, maybe I just don't want to work on this one that hard. <laughs> maybe this one isn't uh, something I, I particularly care about. Uh, same same situation, previously, you know, I just got destroyed in the last fight. So let's, uh, let's try something a little bit different. Let's put in uh, these guys. And uh, let's see how that works. 
and do another fight. Again, this is a 31k team, so I am fighting a stronger team. Doesn't mean I'm inherently going to lose, but I'm definitely not comfortable about clicking auto on it. Uh, let's be clear, guys. I'm going to lose this fight, and that's okay because it doesn't matter. <laughs> to me, anyway. Uh, to you, you might care about stuff like that. By all means, spend all the money and resources you want investing in characters like this. But ultimately, this is what's going to happen. And if you ever feel like you're about to lose, because this isn't a real person, it's just an AI controlling a real person's team. If you ever feel like this fight is not worth it, there's no such thing as a half measure. You can't half win a fight in this game mode. So you either win or you lose, much like everything else. If things are starting to go down, just quit the fight. You're not hurting anybody. You're not killing anything. You're not doing anything. You've already spent the resource. Just get out of there. So I've used three of these resources. I will get more of them in time as time goes on. One thing that I will note is whenever a tournament is running, whatever characters make sense to be used in that tournament will have a uh, offer available. This offer is not good value. I will be the first and last person to say it. Uh, Illyria, Nightiel, Xantara, and then a handful of, of scrolls. These are good uh, items that you probably want. This is not uh, worth that effort to me. Like a thousand Dracoins. Like you could spend a thousand Dracoins to get these characters by like refreshing their nodes or, or or farming a little bit more. So I wouldn't do that. But ultimately, what it comes down to is two stages of tournaments. You're gonna do these fights as you complete fights. You're going to gain access to character shards. For example, this one, once I uh, get 100 points from victories, which go up as you win more and more fights, very similar to Marvel Strike Force's Blitz game mode, uh, you will get this resource. Now, this is tournament tokens, which you can use to do more fights. Uh, I have an extra fights here. So sometimes if I'm doing very well in a tournament and I want to push for a very high, high rating... Uh, I can do spend these to do more fights. Uh, eventually, I think it can cost Drake coins to do. That's up to you and how you want to play. But these are very fun and engaging game modes where you're paired against people who are in similar level and power as you. Just keep in mind something that you may never have known. When your roster is built out, you get a, uh, a rating based on your hero power. So my rating is 148,589. My rating is built on a roster that is incredibly wide invested. I have a lot of characters with a lot of investment. You'll also see I have a decent amount of characters that are relatively low. And some characters I haven't even unlocked yet. And the reason why is when they're building these fights up, these battlegrounds, these tournaments that you're going to be experiencing, they the first thing they base it on is how much power you have. So I'm level 52 with 148,000 power. When you go to my tournament, you're going to notice that a lot of the people that I'm facing off against are very, some of them are like way higher in level. This guy's level 59. But if I click on him to get a little bit more, his power level is within a certain range of mine. Um, not necessarily exactly, but within a certain range. So he is within a level range and within a power range of mine as we go to some of the weaker. Let's find somebody who's uh, what's this, 58. Hey, what's up, buddy? Thank you. 246. So I'm because I have such a wide investment and because I'm at the weirdest point because I'm level 52. I'm actually one of the weakest people in this tournament. And sometimes that's just going to happen. So it's unfortunate for me that I am not going to have a great experience with this tournament of the... Oh, it's my friend. Uh, with the people who are in here. Because our levels are like close. But the people who we're faced off against... This guy's three levels higher than me and doesn't have a name. Uh, and has similar power than me. But he's also not doing well. So be careful with these tournaments. Some tournaments are going to lean right into you, especially if you worked on things like orcs or if you got lucky and unlocked somebody who like an, a really strong Illyria, right? You opened a, a random orb or 27, you know, 10 pack and you pulled a really high drop on her. Then you might be particularly set for this fight. 
but ultimately I'm facing off against people who just have higher access. Now we're at the bottom of the roster here of all the people who either haven't played yet, haven't been attacked, or haven't lost, but you're starting to see that the win-loss record, it once it gets to about here, you're going to see it. But as time goes on, Silent GX is 11-0. 11 and 0, 11 and 0. These guys have been fighting in this tournament for a while and they're doing very well. It takes a while before you start getting here to the, the score and the points of people who just aren't doing too well. Uh, and you're going to see that in a lot of tournaments. Uh, so we did the stage rewards, which is just the more you win, the more multiplier goes up, the more points you get per win, the more of these you get. A lot of times you can get a specialty character like Zalzanar or I think there's a couple of others you'll see around here. But most of the time, it, it is based on a single character that is of average value. For me, I have a Max Corcoran. I don't actually care too much about this event, but other people might care a little bit more. And every time, you get a little bit of free rewards. The rank rewards is what pays out at the end of the tournament. First one to third place gets, 20, gets 40 tournament medals, a uh, handful of Drake coins, decent chunk of Drake coins. Some Aquamarines of action, because all of the currencies in this game are gems. And then quite a bit of Corcoran shards. And a chest that has five of a bunch of stuff. And it's great. Here I am in the dumpster, and I'm going to get a chest with one of a bunch of garbage. Or one of any of these things, I apologize. Uh, so I can get like five of these, or six of these, whatever. Eight Corcoran shards, 300 Aquamarines, 80 Drake coins, and four tournament medals. And tournament medals literally just, it's a rating system that shows you how big your EP is compared to other people. Uh, but the tournament medals goes to the tournament store. And because we haven't looked at the tournament store yet, we have to now. Uh, we have looked at everything else, right? So, the, oh, stops, stops. So the tournament store right here uh, is a little bit better. And by better, I mean gives more options than like the arena and tower. There are some characters in the store that kind of flow around. You know, Count Delman, good character. Dr. Frank, decent character. Rin, okay character. You know, so you could, you, and they, they fluctuate. Sometimes there's different characters in the store, um, and you could pick which one you want. Then you could spend it on a quick influx of gold. Uh, you could buy ability scrolls, which is what I use primarily. I will more often than not use use these to buy rare ability scrolls because these are the rarest resource in the game uh you need them from literally the second ability you upgrade in the character all the way to the end you also need these but these uh uncommon ability scrolls the green ability scrolls tend to come a little bit more fluid you may run out of them but the time between you running out of them and you having enough to do what you were trying to do is usually significantly less than running out of these. these are the tier two or the second or the blue ability materials that help you invest in character abilities these are the rarest uh bottleneck in the game so just be aware that this is a really reliable place to get a couple of them uh if you're not currently working on a character here don't feel bad about buying them. and then there's a couple of pieces of gear of varying quality and uh, value the gear goes up in time as you get stronger so that's it for tournaments more or less uh, hopefully that is useful information to you. Tournaments are uh, three times a week. Uh, the previous tournament I finished in a very poor rank, and it gave potency runes. This one gives cork room. Tournaments give different things. Some tournaments are primarily shards. Some tournaments are runes. Some tournaments are gear. Some tournaments are Drake coins. Well, every tournament is Drake coins, but, but gold shards or, or actual gold. So every tournament is unique and fun. They do have a little bit of a cadence to them or a specific this is going to happen when it does kind of thing. Uh, what I will say, though, is in the early stages of the game, tournaments are just kind of ways where you can uh, actually learn more than you can do. So you can go up against people in a tournament and say, hey, what's going on here? And then you can see, like, well, this guy is using this team. And he's, like, the only one using Thanessa because Thanessa's terrible. And this guy's using this team. You can kind of see, like, oh, wow, a lot of people are, you know, this is a healer. This is a healer. This is an elf. So a lot of people are leaning on specific characters to do the, the, the lion's share of the damage on the team. Um, this team looks abysmal, and I'm going to go fight him now because I can. But the whole idea is... 
yeah, I'm going to beat that guy now. So that guy doesn't have a lot of investment. But you'll see as you go up higher and higher, the people who are winning are have investment in characters that like, well, I'll use the characters I have to just to get into the fight. But then the characters that are going to carry the damage are maybe a Snorri, maybe a, a Freezard. Uh, I'm using Mar because why not? Uh, that kind of thing. Hopefully this information was helpful. Uh, to you hopefully you uh, you will enjoy tournaments as much as i do and not every tournament is winnable as i said but a lot of them are easy to prepare for so you will eventually balance out to wins you should probably go about 50 50 on average so you'll go five and five or something like that for the most part but the better you are the more wide your roster is and the better you become at the game the higher your win rates going to be uh or you might just get lucky like some of the other people who uh have uh, the right investment for their power, or they might be a whale, couldn't tell you. Anyway, have a good night, have a great day. Comment below, let me know what you think about tournaments, uh, and I have been Tony Scangeli, and I will catch you later.